Hello and welcome to series two, episode one of Saturday Morning Nostalgia. So we've moved on to 2011 now as a year and I'm going to look at the first quarter of that year, so that's January through to March. Um, two main things came out then. We had uh, Meridian Besieged on February the 4th and the Deck Builders Toolkit on March the 11th and that was the Deck Builders Toolkit 2011. So that was a new new version of the previous year's Deck Builders Toolkit. Um, the bulk of stuff I'm going to go through is going to be from Mirrodin Besieged. And I've got some, some cards I want to just flick through, talk a little bit about the set, and then look at some intro decks, and also just a quick look at a one event deck that I bought at the time. <clears throat> so... Meridian Besiege, which came out on February the 4th. It was a small set, it had 155 cards, 60 commons, 40 uncommons, 35 rares, 10 mythics, and rather unusually for a small set, it had 10 basic lands. There was two artworks for each of the colours of mana. And as I said, that was unusual for a small set but it was there for flavour reasons. Um, so it sort of illustrated the change in Muradin as a result of it being besieged by the Phyrexians. Also, uh, I'd mentioned when we were looking at Scars of Muradin that the cards in addition to the set uh, symbol had a watermark on them. And obviously Muradin Besiege has a new set symbol but the, the watermarks remained and the balance slightly changed. So we can see here, it's a bit easier because we've got some foils. But um, what they did was, it was about 50-50 split now on the, on the watermarks. So 50% of the cards had a Mirren watermark on them, which you can see on the Neuroc Commander fairly clearly on there, I think. Not so clearly because it's not a foil on the Phyrexian Crusader. You can see we have the Phyrexian watermark. So that was on the other 50% of the cards in the set. The set itself came in 16 card boosters, 6 card boosters. There were 4 intro packs, 2 event decks and a fat pack. And the pre-release which occurred a week before the release date had these uh, actual pre-release packs which you got which inside them had a special faction pack and you could actually choose whether you wanted to be part of the um, Mirren faction or the Phyrexian faction and that would affect the selection of that special booster pack that was in there. The themes in the set and you can see some of these on, on the rares that we're looking at here and, and the foils um, there was in fact proliferate imprint and metal, metal craft and those themes were reflected in the keywords and abilities in addition to that there were some other keywords and abilities which were battle cry and something called living weapon which we'll have a look at so let's look look uh, before we look at the rares, actually, I'll quickly go through the player's guide because it's always nice to, to see that retrospectively. So again, the player's guide explains a little bit about the, the divide, and the Mirren faction and the Phyrexian faction. And what they did, instead of having the ten coolest cards in this particular one, they had the five of each of the Phyrex factions. A little bit about some of the key themes in the set. Some of the key characters. You may have seen this in other earlier fat packs. I know there was, um, this was featured in 10th edition where they have this combo corner. So the three that they outline here is Master's Call, Shape and You, and Blightsteel Colossus, which is a, a 
and Infect type combo. Piston, Sledge and Ickle Wellspring. So that's the sort of equipment in artifact interaction going on there. And then Fangren Marauding Creeping Corrosion. And the card encyclopedia. I'm just going to flick to the back just so you can see the artwork. So you, as I said, there was um, two pieces of artwork for each colour of mana and you know, that, that's unusual to see in a, in a small set and it was done, like I say, for flavour reasons. And there were only two non-basic lands in the set which were both at rare. Contested Warzone and Moth Nexus. Okay, so let's look at some of the rares I've got here. So we've got Phyrexian Rebirth, very interesting board sweeper, so it destroys all creatures and then it puts an XX colourless horror, horror artifact creature token onto the battlefield where X is the number of creatures destroyed this way. Interesting card to play in Commander that. Also got uh, Shapeshifter in the set in the form of Cryptoplasm. You can see I've got a rather nice foil there which you can probably easier see the watermark, the mirror and water, watermark. At the beginning of your upkeep, you may have Cryptoplasm become a copy of another target creature. If you do, Cryptoplasm gains this ability. So it's a shapeshifter that can jump around. There were some cycles in this set, one of which was uh, the Zen Zeniths. So you can see I've got a blue Sun Zenith, which is the blue one. X and three blue, instant target player draws X cards, shuffle Blue Sun Zenith into its owner's library. There were some also some colour aligned artifact creatures in the set, which we'll find I think when we go through the uh, the other rarities. There were some mirrored pairs. There were a pair of mirrored heroes, a pair of crusaders, a pair of couriers, and a pair of striders. So you can see here I've got one part of the pair, I've got the Phyrexian Crusader, which was the one in black. So that was a creature zombie knight, first strike protection for red and from white, and had infect on it. There's a creeping corrosion, which was mentioned in that combo corner. And luckily enough, I, I pulled uh, a couple of sort of key characters in here. Gliss of the Traitor, which in this set was a legendary creature zombie elf. Black and two green for 3-3 three, three with first strike death touch. Whenever an a creature an opponent controls is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, you may return target artifact card from your graveyard to your hand. And also, this is actually a foil Tezzeret Angel of Volus, which I was lucky enough to, to pull. Two blue black, Planeswalker Tezzeret, three loyalty, plus one is look at the top five cards of your library. You may reveal an artifact card from among them and put it into your hand. Put the rest on the, bottom, the bottom of your library in any order. Minus one target artifact becomes a five five artifact creature, and the minus four target player loses X life and you gain X life, where X is twice the number of artifacts you control. Another part of a, a combo that was mentioned in that combo corner is Blightsteel Colossus. So this is a, a 12 to cast 11-11 artifact creature golem with Trample Infect and Indestructible on it. And if it was put into a graveyard from anywhere, you reveal Blightsteel Colossus and shuffle it into its owner's library instead. We've obviously got more mirrors. A mere wielder and a shimmer wielder, a, a mere wielder and a shimmer mere at uh, rare. Contested war zone was a rare land, as was in, in, in Moth Nexus. So, with contested war zone, whenever a creature deals combat damage to you, that creature, creature's controller gains control of contested war zone. 
add plus one to your mana pool, one and tap, attacking creatures get plus one plus zero until end of turn. This was a card that was in the um, event decks, the two, one of the two event decks that was uh, part of this set, which I'm going to show you the one actually that it was in. And an Ink Moth Nexus, very interesting Infect card. It's a land, you tap, add one to your mana pool. For single colourless, Ink Moth Nexus becomes a 1-1 one, one Blink Moth artifact creature with flying and infect until end of turn. It's still a land. Those are my rares. So what I'm going to do now is just flick through some of the non-rare cards that I have. So I'm going to zoom in for this. Okay. okay. So again, we just go through by colour and just flick through some of these. So you can get a, again, you can get a bit of a feel for, for what this set was about. Okay, there we go. So a quarter's Paladin that have battle cry now. I mentioned battle cry, so with battle cry, whenever this creature attacks each other attacking creature gets plus one plus zero. There was metal craft in the set, appeared on various cards. Obviously, the set still cared about artifacts. There's a way of dealing with artifacts, creatures, or enchantments by bouncing to them to the top of an owner's library. Divine Offering, way of getting rid of artefacts. Quite a few of those. It's it's quite that's quite typical with a small set. Um, you know, particularly at common, if you've got a small set and you're opening packs, you're going to start to see a, a lot of commons repeating themselves. Plus, I think some of the packs I may have opened up as a result of opening, uh, say, the toolkits, the later toolkit may have ended up in here. Kemba's region, so the set is still caring about equipment. The owning relic warder, the, the owning sky hunter. So we had cats in the set. Another card with battle cry there. Master's call. Priest of Norn, so there was infecting white in here. So what you'll notice is with this set, infect was starting to creep into the other colours. Which obviously the uh, you know, was, was in keeping with, with the theme of the set. As we're sort of slowly seeing um, Muradin becoming sort of more corrupted with the... Um, Introduction of the Phyrexians. So we had things like Fuel for the Cause, which was a counter target spell with Proliferate sort of stapled to it. It's mirroring the spies. So we've got Flying in Blue. We have, we have Shroud in Blue. It's card draw, stapled to a creature. Bounce. It's discard in blue. Another card with metal craft on it. Also had defender on it. Well, there's treasure mage. So treasure mage, two and a blue, two two. When treasure mage enters the battlefield, you may search a library for an artifact. Artifact card with converted mana cost six or greater. Reveal that card and put it into your hand if you do shuffle your library. Turn the tide. Steel sabotage. So again we had this minus one, minus one th um, theme in the in the block as a whole which sort of fitted in and complemented the whole poison counter thing. And um, 
ability to uh, add charge counters through Vodolkin's Infuser's ability there. With a section that's got card draw on it. But you have to sack a creature as an additional cost. So moving on to black. Life loss, Flints and Might, which has Infect on it. So in, in black we're going to see, you know, I know it's in all the other colours, but we're going to see particularly Infect and um, the sort of minus one, minus one counter thing. Discard, not surprising to see that in black. Ways of getting back cards from the graveyard. Friction Rager. More Infect. Septic Rats, another Infect card. Spread the Sickness. Um, so this was a removal spell with Proliferate stapled to it. Again, you can see how you know the sort of spells that you might common, commonly see in the different colours have an, an additional theme-based abilities stapled to them that were relevant for the set. So now we're moving on red. We can expect to see some burn stuff that's been that's, you know, typically found in red. But uh, again, we sort of keep our eyes open for, for additional abilities that are stapled on that are the theme-specific. So with Burn the Impure, we've got one and a red a Burn spell at instant speed that deals three damage to target creature. But if the creature has Infect, it'll deal three damage to that creature's controller. Crush, way of getting rid of uh, non-creature artifacts. Some dinosaurs. There's Battle Cry again in red. Way of exiling artifacts. So of course in a you know in a artifact heavy set you need a fair proportion of cards that are gonna deal with artifact on some level. More burn staple to a creature. Another battle cry card. So it looks like Battle Cry, I think, was in red and white. And again, that's not an unusual thing to, to find certain um, themes and abilities that, that were typical of the set to only be in certain colours. Go oh, and pulled a whole load of Ogre Resistors. Another typical red thing, this is what I would call sort of a lopsided pump where you get uh, you know, plus one plus zero or plus three plus zero, which pumps the uh, power up. In white, you sort of see the reverse often with that, where you'll get a, a pump spell that pumps the uh, toughness. And some more metal craft there. Turn our attention to green. So as with the previous set, um, you know, green had in fact, and I know that it's spilt over in, in to other colours now, of course, in the set. We've got um, a spider with in fact on it. Fangren Marauder, that was one of the cards that was mentioned in that combo corner. A load of those. This is Korea, and I think I mentioned this in the previous set. You know, these sort of signature cards. So, you know, if you've got a card like Glissa, which is at rare, and you're not opening many many packs, you're not necessarily going to know 
uh, just by the packs you're opening that the glisser is a thing in the set however if you've got a signature card at common then you know that's going to make you wonder who this glisser is lead the stampede It's an interesting card that I was just looking at that. You've got like a sort of anti count self counter card there, so you can't put counters on this, can't be placed on this. So, this isn't gonna, you know, you wouldn't be able to put poison counters on this particular card. Got metal craft in green. Pity is strike, so a way of dealing with flying. But also, you know, this poison is, is stapled onto this particular spell. Played more beast. Sack out and proliferate together. Rock Wolf had infect on it. And card draw. Or oh, conditional card draw. So green, with in terms of pump spells, you you know green is is more commonly a, like symmetrical. So with this one, you're getting plus one plus one. Another card with infect on it, and uh, Viridian Emissary I find a very interesting card. So it's uh, one and a green, two one. When Viridian Emissary is put into your graveyard from the battlefield, you may search your library for a basic land card, put it onto the battlefield tap, then shuffle your library. So you've got. Uh, like land, land ramp there. Okay, so moving on to our artifacts, and again in an artifact heavy set, you can see we've got a fairly large proportion of artifact cards when compared to the other colours. And I think I mentioned in my preamble we had these creatures which had um, an activated colour on them as well. So you know, the casting cost was colourless, but the actual activation cost had a colour. Sentinel, more Mir here, yeah, we probably see quite a few Mirs. And equipment. And artifact creatures with both infect on them and proliferate. There's another a uh, colourless creature which has a coloured activated ability on it. Oh, so here's the living weapon. So with living, we living weapon what happened was the equipment entered the battlefield with a germ counter on it. So zero zero germ counter. So the o only reason why it stayed alive was because the equipment, all of the equipment that were living weapons had um, a pump uh, pump ability on them. So this one's like plus one plus one. So therefore the germ counter doesn't just die However, if you move this piece of equipment like re-equip it for its equipment cost Then the germ counter is just going to go away um, But what's interesting is because of that this can you know this behaves effectively like a this piece of equipment behaves like a creature straight away Whereas normally, you know, with with regular equipment, it sits there and you have to attach it to something before you can use it. This one comes pre-attached to a, albeit zero zero, black germ creature token. Another artifact creature with a coloured activated ability. Another golem in the set. Gargoyles. Another living weapon in the form of mortar pod. Or mere. More infect cart creatures. There was a cycle of striders as well. I think it was 
Peace Strider and Pierce Strider were the two. Pierce Strider, it um, caused some as a target opponent to lose three life, and Peace Strider, I believe it, he gained life. I think Peace Strider was in white and white. I can remember. It's Piston Sledge, Plague Mirror. Razorfield Rhino with metal craft on it. Another card which had the charge counters on it. And you, of course, as you saw before, you had ways in which you could increase charge counters. There's quite a heavy amount of... Um, Living weapons in here. Got mana fixing. Another uh, artifact creature with an uh, indicate red as the activated ability. More living weapons. It's the green one. And more equipment. Okay, so hopefully that's giving you a, a good idea of, uh, of the set. Certainly that's basically what I, the cards that I pulled. Again, I, you know, basically opened a, a fat pack and then a few, a few boosters. So let's have a look at some of the decks that I mentioned. So first up, we'll have a look at the intro deck. So I basically just bought two. I bought the the black blue one so there were there were four um there were four intro packs and these had a um booster pack in them as well so the four were path of blight which was white green doom inevitable which was blue black which is this one miramancy which was a blue red deck and battle cries which is a white red so the two rares in the, the blue black, and one of which was a foil, were Psychosis Crawler, which was a horror. So for five, you get the Star Star Artifact Creature Horror, where its power and toughness are equal to the number of cards in your hand. Whenever you draw a card, each opponent loses one life. And uh, the other rare was a, was a living weapon called Bone Horde. So there's the um, black germ creature token. Equip creature gets plus X plus X, where X is the number of creature cards in all graveyards, and you equip it for two. So just quickly going through, these are, the, I think, the common creatures here. So we've got a couple of fume spitters, a couple of meersers, Oculus was three of those, Barony, Barony Vampire, single one of that, Phyrexian Rager, a couple of copies of that in the deck, uh, Armoured Canstrix, Caustic Hound, Flare Husk, another piece of a living, another living weapon. Still Sabotage. So we can see here we've got our non-creature spells. Horrifying Revelation, Disentomb, Doom Blade, Steady Progress, Vivisection. There's a couple of those. Spread the Sickness. Moving on to our Uncommons, a Vidalcan At Anatomist, Pierce Strider. A couple of those. Skin Render. Contagion Clasp, a couple of those, Trigon of Corruption. So you can see, in, obviously, in the case of the intro deck, we're going to see cards from previous sets as well. Skin Wing, Strand Walker, there's Mind Control in here from the core set. And then there's our mana base, which is just a stray blue-black uh, basic lands. And then the other intro deck that I bought at the time was the this was the white red this is a battle cry deck so again the two rares we've got victory's herald which is the one that's in the foot in foil three three white four four creature angel flying whenever angels herald attacks tagging creature gains flying lifelink until end of turn and this is, there was a zenith in the deck so white sun zenith X, white, 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 put an X, two, two, white cat creature tokens onto the battlefield. Shuffle white Sun Zenith into, your, into its owner's library. 
so I've got to turn the right way this time. So we've got the uh, uh, uncommon creatures first, so there's a couple of memnites, a couple of single signal pests, a couple of uh, quarter paladins, it's Mere Smith, the uh, Leonian Relic Warrior, and then the equipment at common we had Viridian Claw, we had a Whisper Silk Cloak from the Corset. Oh, there's the Peace Strider. So that was a, uncommon, actually. That was a... I got that wrong. So that was an artefact. It wasn't coloured. And when it entered the battlefield, you gained three life. A couple of those. Ardent Recruiter was in here. So we're moving on to our commons now. Got a Gold Mirror, an Iron Mirror. So they're going to help with uh, fixing the mana. Silver Coat Lion from the Corset. A Leon, Leonian Sky Hunter from Meridian Siege. Got also Ring Leader. Got three of those. There's a Siege Mastodon. Razorfield Rhino. Two Origin Spell Bombs. So we're moving on to our common non creature spells. Galvanic Blast. Way of dealing with uh, creatures, but also has Metal Craft attached to it. There's a couple of those. A couple of Master's Call. In fact, there's three of those in this deck. Uh, Rest was also in here. So we're moving on to uh, more of our non-creature spells. Concussive Bolt and then our Mana Base. That was obviously white and then red, although a much larger proportion of uh, white mana. And you saw also the deck had mirrors to sort of help smooth that mana out. So the other decks that were released, and this was the first time they did it was a set, was these um, event decks. So this is Into the Breach. And these decks, in addition to a 60 card deck, came with, um, came with a sideboard. Now this actually wasn't a bad deck, and I remember at the time, I think it was Channel Fireball, released a way in which you could update this, with not that many cards actually. This was fairly cheap to tweak. Um, I think what you essentially did was increase the amount of Goblin Guides, and played around a bit with the mana base. I can't remember specifically, but there's a definitely a Channel Fireball article, which I think was done by... Um, LSV. It might have even been on one of their videos, actually. And they went through this deck and actually sort of upgraded it. So, there's a couple of Goblin... So this is just the, the straight deck as it was in the pack. I haven't upgraded this. A um, couple of Goblin Guides. A Spike Shot Elder. Devastating Summons. You can see these. These are all the rares. And then we've got... A full set of Memnites, full set of Ornithopters, full set of Signal Pests, full set of Goblin War Drivers, There's a couple of Dark Steel Axes, a couple of Goblin Bushwhackers from Zendikar, an Iron Mirror to help with the Red Manor. A uh, full set of lightning bolts from the core set. A full set of called out the rebirths. Two galvanic blasts. A couple of panic spell bombs. A single contested war zone. And then the rest of the deck. It's, it's basically a mono red deck. So it's this sort of very clever combination of red with a very cheap casting cost artifact creatures and you can see consequently the uh, the mana curve on this is pretty low uh, so the idea is this is an incredibly fast deck now the sideboard obviously had to deal with certain threats that would have been in the general metagame at the time so it had four goblin ruin, ruin four goblin ruin blasters a couple of unstable footings a full set of Searing Blazes, 
a couple of active treasons, two into the cores and a single ley line of punishment. So that was that deck. So that's all the scars of Mirrodin stuff I need to go through. So the only other thing that was released in that first quarter, which I, I purchased, well actually it's the only other thing that was released in paper, was a deck builder's toolkit. So this was the uh, 2011 version. I don't have the, the deck builder's toolkit in its original form because that's been long broken up and put into different things. But what I do have, if I can find it down here, is the, the insert that came with this. So this will give you some idea. So the Deck Builders Toolkit, as with all toolkits, came with 285 cards, 100 basic lands from M11, 85 fixed cards, so that was 10 uncommons and 75 commons, and then four of 11 what were called strategy packs. And in those strategy packs, there were basically four uncommons and six uncommons, so so 10 and times 4, um, and one lot of, and they were sandwiched between uh, terramorphic expanses, I believe, yeah. So the idea being that you got 4 out of a possible 11 strategy packs, and those strategy packs were 10 cards, 4 uncommons and 6 commons, and then also there were 4 15 card booster packs from recent sets, now the um, the fixed and semi-random stuff came from M11 Zendikar World Weight Rise of the Eldrazi Scars of Scars of Mirrodin and Mirrodin Besieged. So there's a little about building deck, but I was just going to go through and just show you the the different um, strategy things that were available. So these were the eleven that you could you could get. So you had four of these. So there was Red Burn. White Equipment, Library Depletion, Elves was a possibility, we had that, Mana Ramp, Blue White Flies, Black Vampires, which is Vampires I think, Black Discard, Battle Cry, Green White Auras, and Metalcraft. And that was basically it. And that came out on March the 11th. So there we have it. I hope you've uh, enjoyed another trip down uh, memory lane. There's lots of stuff from Meridian Besieged there to look at. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.